How's it going everyone? It's Dan from Title Gardens. Lots of hobbyists are in the market for some really nice hardy beginner corals. And oftentimes my first suggestion is the Discosoma mushroom. Now there's three main reasons that make mushrooms such a good option. Number one, Discosoma are one of the most resilient coralomorphs. They can thrive in a wide variety of tanks, and some tanks that are even criminally neglected. Now I often joke that if someone is losing Discosoma, they need to really reconsider their choice of hobbies because this reef aquarium thing probably isn't going to work out. Seriously though, you shouldn't be killing mushrooms. The second reason Discosoma are so great is that they come in every color imaginable, as well as a variety of patterns. There's some varieties that are striped, spotted, or even have irregular splotches. Still, some of the most striking Discosoma are just a solid color. When you get a nice colony going, they can give an area of your tank a burst of color. The third reason why I like Discosoma is that they can be propagated easily. If you're curious how we propagate these guys, you can take a look at this annotation to see a video that we made a while back on the topic. Even without active propagation, these mushrooms will multiply by a process called pedal laceration. While they don't seem to be doing a whole lot, they're actually in constant motion. As they move, the mushrooms leave behind a small piece of their foot. These small bits turn into full-size mushrooms in the following months. As for their care, these mushrooms are tolerant of most tanks, but there are some conditions that are more successful than others we found. Let's start with lighting. Although I almost always recommend low light for Discosoma, there is some room to play here. It's possible that brighter lighting may result in brighter coloration of the polyp. If you want to try increasing light, make sure to do it gradually, as overexposure is much more dangerous than underexposure. Extreme overexposure will result in oxide radicals forming in the flesh of the mushrooms that look like strange white growths. You definitely want to avoid these. As for flow, I recommend low flow, period, end of story. There's two main reasons for this. First. One of the few ways that mushrooms meet an early demise is if they detach from the substrate that they were holding onto and drift around the tank. For whatever reason, Discosoma are not so great at reattaching to anything. High flow makes it more likely for them to detach and nearly impossible to reattach. Second, Discosoma extend best in lower flow. In fact, the lower the flow, the better for these guys. This discussion of flow leads me into my next topic, feeding. Almost nobody feeds Discosoma, but we have found that they can be fed so long as the flow in the tank is low. Here you can see them consuming pellet food from sustainable aquatics. I have not found them to be particularly picky when it comes to the types of food offered. The way they envelop the food is a pretty cool sight to see. Now we don't go out of our way to feed mushrooms, but after watching how readily they eat, I'm going to do it more to see how that affects their growth and color. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see what Discosoma we have on hand at Tidal Gardens, you can click on the mushroom here and it will take you right to the store. Happy reefing everyone.